If you've ever visited New York City during the summer, you'd know just how unbearably hot that city can get. You know, the streets, the pavement, absorbing all that heat and radiating it back out, the buildings trapping it, there's not much wind going through it. Anyway, thanks to climate change, Manhattan's only going to get hotter. Actually, everything is going to get hotter. And now researchers have calculated that the rising temperatures will inc increase the death toll linked to a warming climate in Manhattan by as much as 20% by the 2020s, just the next decade. In order to find how changing temperatures might affect Manhattan and the rest of the Big Apple, I guess the other boroughs, uh, researchers examined temperature readings throughout the city. They found that, in general, temperature was already increasing. Global warming is here already. Daily records from Manhattan's Central Park showed that average monthly temperatures have increased by 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit from the period between 1901 and 2000. And just that temperature, just this, you know, just this three, te three degree temperature is killing people every year in Manhattan from exposure to extreme heat and extreme cold in the winter. It's not just global warming, it's climate change. As climate change continues to rear its ugly head, more and more people are going to die as the result of these extreme temperatures. And while heat-related deaths are projected to increase by 20% in the 2020s, numbers are even worse as we look farther down the road. Between the 2050s and the 2080s, projections show a net increase of 15 to 30 percent in temperature-related deaths, which would mean that, on average, there'd be a thousand temperature-related deaths in Manhattan every year. Extrapolate this across the nation, and unless we do something right now to curb the devastating effects of climate change, thousands of Americans will lose their lives. Now, since cars are a major burner of fossil fuels, one of the actions that we should take right now is to invest more in cleaner and greener automobile technology. And that's where companies like Tesla Motors come in. Tesla, an American company, which employs more than 3,000 American workers, manufactures and sells electric cars. That's all they do. Based in California, the company was one of the many green clean energy tech companies that was given a federal grant by the Department of Energy and the Obama administration. You might recall during the campaign of 2012, Mitt Romney said in a debate, you know, like Solyndra, another clean tech company that was granted federal funds and went bankrupt. And Romney says, Tesla's a loser. But don't forget, you put $90 billion, mm -hmm. like 50 years worth of breaks into, into solar and wind, to, to, to Solyndra and Fisker and Tesla and Enter One. I mean, I, I had a friend who said, you don't just pick the winners and losers, you pick the losers. Yeah, right, Mitt. Uh, the facts clearly say otherwise. Yesterday, Tesla announced that it had paid back in full its $465 million government loan a whopping nine years early. This in thanks in large part to the recent boom in Tesla's sales and popularity. In 2012, the Tesla Model S won the prestigious Car of the Year Award from Motor Trend magazine. And in the first quarter of this year, Tesla Model S sales were higher than sales of comparable models from Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. While the Model S comes at a fairly high price tag, between 70 and 100 grand, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said this week that the company plans to make a slightly smaller model than the Model S, and the price may be slashed by up to 50%, making it easier for middle-class Americans to, for to afford the clean green car particularly when you consider that you don't have the gasoline costs. But Tesla isn't the only car manufacturer witnessing soaring sales of electric cars. Another American car company, Ford, now has the Ford Focus Electric. And there's the Nissan Leaf. These two less expensive electric cars have helped triple the number of electric cars sold over the past two years, from 17,500 in 2011 to 53,000 in 2012. Soon, even electric cars could be a thing of the past. Researchers are now trying to create vehicles that run entirely off hydrogen. Hydrogen burns safely and slowly in fuel cells. They use it as a fuel to produce electricity through chemical reactions. And you can create it using water and just run electricity through the water. Despite what Republicans like Mitt Romney will tell you, green energy cars are the wave of the future. Motor vehicle emissions of CO2 account for more than 15% of global fossil fuel CO2 releases. Just imagine what would happen to our environment and our planet if we replaced every gas-guzzling car 
with one that ran on clean electricity or even cleaner hydrogen. Make no mistake about it, climate change is the biggest threat that our planet has ever faced. Fortunately, we still have the power to alter our planet's destiny and to create a no-carbon future. It's time to ditch the gas guzzlers once and for all and go green. And we'll save the lives of thousands of Americans while we're at it.